Uh, once it's uh, authenticated, we get to see uh, the iFixes and packages, and we can choose effectively what we want, agree the license. Because it's an evaluation, we have to fill out um, a, a sort of evaluation form. There's about three or four options. Um, fill it out as required, click next. Uh, where are we going to put this repository? Where's it going to be saved to? Because we're, we're downloading this, you see, and we're going to put it onto our own disk structure somewhere. Uh, Windows, obviously, you'll have some sort of uh, drive, hopefully D drive or something. Uh, being Linux, it's just a file system. So uh, make sure you've got enough space. Um, you need plenty of space. In this case, you can see it requires about 820 gigabytes. So, oh no, two, two gigabytes, sorry. <laughs> I've got 823. Uh, so yeah, um, just be aware of that. Here's an example of um, the content it's going to copy in the case of this trial. Um, at this point on my training course for actual you know, corporate training and classroom training, I don't get people to do this piece because I've already downloaded it for them. So they can just skip this next few screens because otherwise you're going to wait and it's not practical in the training room for everyone to be downloading the repositories. But if you're using my course from home, then you'll have to download these. And it could take some time depending on your connection. So be prepared for that. I remember the first time I was doing this when I first had a look at Webs for 8. And I had several goes at this before I figured out the best way um, to make it easier to get the downloads. And that's how I discovered the IBM packaging utility. Uh, once it's uh, finished downloading, you get to finish. And then if we look at the file system after an installation, we'll see uh, what a repository looks like. You can see there's a repository.config file. This is key. It's pretty well um, defining what's in this particular repository. Uh, you then can move this entire repository uh, where it's required. So we've now got a repository. We want to uh, essentially create a silent installation. And what we do is we perform the installation while in recording mode. And what happens is we create a response file. Now, it is possible to download response files from IBM. You can do a search at IBM and find predetermined templates. Uh, and then make changes to them. But until you understand what's happening, it may not be uh, that useful. So it might be a good idea to at least do one recording to get your template and then modify after you understand the you know XML and how it's structured. So what we do is we launch uh, IBM Installation Manager in recording mode, and that's how we start uh, an actual recording of a response file. And you'll see here that we have the um, IBM um, installation manager uh, executable which is IBM IM with the minus skip install and um, we have a path to uh, or actual file called wes 8 nd underscore silent underscore dot xml and what, what, that, what that's doing is that's saying that I'm going to perform a, a, a silent a recording of an installation into this file which will be used later in a silent installation. Once we've uh, launched uh, that process, what we can do is then configure the repository we're going to use. There's a file menu option for this, but you can also click the short link called repositories. We then add a repository. We browse to the location and where we put our repository. And we can see the repository config is the file we're looking for. We add that, and then you can see we have our repository configured. We can do a test connection. To verify that we can connect to that repository and that means the installer will get what it needs uh, from the repository. Uh, once the uh, installation has started um, we obviously get some sort of uh, wizard which uh, goes through what's available in the installation package and in this case you can see that it tells us it's a network deployment trial and it's version uh, 8002 so it's probably a fixed pack level 2. Uh, it might be a later version when you go to trial. Uh, this was done a few months back, so um, it, it was um, the fixed pack at that time. Uh, one thing to to be aware of is that um, you know fixed packs are always uh, being released. Uh, the product evolves. In version seven right now, we're up to version or fixed pack twenty five, as of a couple of days ago. So um, yeah. Um, 
tech specs are gonna uh, are gonna be around and you're gonna have to learn how to sort them out as well you can choose to um, limit um, like filter out fixed packs and extensions and any other things that may be uh, added to the package that you don't want click next we uh, essentially get to choose the fixes and things that we want to add as part of the base installation that we've selected we then accept the license agreement choose our or reselect the same opt IBM IM shared which is our shared resources directory um, we then click next again and choose our IBM location. Now, when I say IBM location, I mean what I mean is where's Webs for application going to be in, uh, installed? The default is to use slash opt slash IBM slash WebSphere slash app server. That's a default convention. You don't have to use it. You can use any location you want as long as you've got file systems. Some companies put the profile name in the binaries and install a separate set of binaries for each profile thus allowing each profile to be fixed pack independently so that you can have a deployment manager managing different uh, levels of web sphere, different versions. Um, that can be for testing purposes. It's not typical for runtime purposes, but it can be done. Um, that depends on your standards. So you've got flexibility. Uh, this has nothing to do with the profiles. This is just the web sphere binaries. Profiles can be in another folder and as I said, we'll deal with them in other videos in the future because that's already commented a lot on my blog. You get to choose your language like before, and then we get to see some of the options available in this particular installation. You can see you can turn on sample packages, turn them off. You get to choose your architecture 32 bit, 64 bit, it automatically will detect your platform. Uh, you get to, yeah, and like in the case of WebSphere 8, you get to add the application client, which you'll see standalone thin clients, etc. That's essentially for adding in some extra stuff. Um, basically, you don't have to have those. Depends on what you're trying to do. Are you using EPAV3 or not? Depends on your development, I suppose. Uh, if you want to just trial it all out and install everything, but um, you don't really need sample applications on, uh, on production servers, so you don't need to do that. I wouldn't do that.